also synonymize entries. So old names for new names. Drag the old name onto the new name and synonymize the two together. So that if somebody enters the old name onto the form, it'll actually tie the two together and it'll give you an indication of what the new name for that thing should actually be. You can enter data directly from the taxonomic tree as well. You go into the tree and you can just start entering new taxa. Click on the parent and add a new genus. Click on the, click on the, on the genus, add a new species, whatever the case may be. You can just go into these trees and directly do that information directly from there. Geography tree works in much the same way. You can also split these trees in half so that it facilitates dragging something from the bottom of the tree to the top of the tree um, if you need to. Um, so trying to increase the functionality of these trees. Each one of these trees is driven by a definition file which indicates which of those levels you want to include in your tree and which ones are enforced, meaning that if a level is, is enforced, you cannot skip it. So you cannot put a genus in an order. You cannot put a species in a family. You have to put a species in a genus, a genus in a family, a family, and etc. Um, and so you can enforce whichever of those levels you want to, and you can also decide which of those levels you want to include in the full name that is built for your specimens. Genus, species, subspecies, variety, subvariety, format, whatever the case may be. One of the biggest things that we were asked to do with Specify 6 and coming from Specify 5 was to come up with an easy way of importing information from an Excel spreadsheet into your database. So dumping information in, be it from the field or be it information that's been gifted to you by another collection, trying to get that information into your database in, in some sort of a rapid format. And so that's essentially what the workbench does. Um, it allows for um, importing and mapping of Excel data to the fields in your data model. So you can take an Excel spreadsheet and you can bring it into Specify. Um, it takes you to a mapping editor, which then allows you to map up all of your Excel spreadsheet columns to the fields in the data model, so that you're mapping up like for like, catalog number goes in the catalog number field, specimen number goes in whatever. Um, and so you can map all of those up. If you call your Excel spreadsheet column headers, very similarly to what they are called in the database, it will do a pretty good job of mapping them all up automatically then you just need to go through and map up those ones that haven't been mapped correctly. So you map up all the data, um, and then it brings it into the database as what's called a workbench data set. It looks very much like an extra Excel spreadsheet, but there are a whole bunch of things that you can do within this data set once you have it within Specify. We have a number of validation tools built into the workbench, so you can see some of those cells have been, have been highlighted in red and yellow. The red ones are invalid cells, meaning that there is something wrong with the data and it cannot be imported into the database. It could be as simple as a catalog number that's been duplicated, and so it won't let you bring it in because it cannot create duplicate catalog numbers, or it, be, it may be a date that's the, the incorrect format. You've got a month that's 15th month or something like that that you may need to correct. The yellow ones are showing new cells that are going to be created in that table in the database. And so there are instances where it may indeed be a new species that you are entering into your collection, or it may also be a nice way of checking spelling errors. If you know that that species already exists in your collection and it's highlighted in yellow, it means that it's a, new, it's a new species that's going to be created. It must have been spelled incorrectly. So it's a really good way of being able to verify all the data and check the data before you bring it in to the database. There are also tools down at the bottom there that you can use to do various things. Um, you can, again, interact with Nelson's Geolocate engine directly through the workbench and do georeferencing in a batch mode. You can block a whole bunch of cells and pass all of those things through to geolocate and then georeference each one of those localities one at a time in a batch. You can also interact with Google Earth, so once they're georeferenced, you can then drop them off onto Google Earth and see them on a map and make sure that your georeferences are correct and that they're actually appearing in the correct place on the planet. There's also an image window um, built, into the, built into the system um, that allows you to attach images to individual rows within the workbench so that you're not only bringing the data into the, into the database but you're bringing images along with it. You can bring in specimen images, you can bring in images of um, localities of where things have been collected. Um, all of those things are perfectly possible. You can also interact with the workbench in form view. So instead of looking at it as a grid, you can look at it as a form. And you can manipulate that form by just dragging and dropping the fields around on the form to create your own little data entry forms. The nice thing about this is that it simplifies the data model. It essentially flattens out the data model. And so if you have students that are working in your collection who are intimidated by the whole form structure of a relational database system, you can create these 
very simplistic data entry forms for them to be able to do data entry into the workbench. And then you can verify the data before you bring it into the database. And so there are numerous ways in which you can use the, the workbench to be able to get data into the database in a fairly rapid format. As I mentioned, you can attach images to rows. You can attach images to rows that have existing data in them to bring them into the database. Or you can actually use those images to do data entry in the workbench. There is a tool within the workbench where you can attach images to blank rows in the data set. And then if you have two screens, you can open up the image on one and the, and the workbench on the other. And you can then use the images of labels to then do data entry into those rows. Every time you go down to a new row, the next label will be presented to you. And you can just use those to do data entry to those particular rows in the workbench. This is Nelson's geolocate engine, uh, which functions exactly the same way in the workbench as it does within Specify. It handles polygons, it ha handles error estimates, you can do measurements on the map, you can get elevations. Um, all of that kind of stuff is perfectly doable. You can move the dot around on the map, change the size of your error estimate, you can create your own polygons, and all of that information then automatically just gets dropped into those fields in your workbench data set, and then you can port it. Same thing with Google Earth. Um, you can visualize all of this material um, on a map with these little um, balloon bubbles that have all the data associated with those particular specimens. And then you can save this as a KML file and you can share it with people. So instead of just sending them your data as an Excel spreadsheet, you can send it as a KML file and they can actually visualize all of your information and see exactly where it was collected um, on a map. Once you get to the upload stage and you've validated your data and you've augmented it and georeferenced it and done all that kind of stuff, you can then upload it into the database. It's a simple process of hitting an upload button and it goes through and it uploads all the data into those tables. Once you've got all the data uploaded, it is not yet committed to your database. So you can have a look at the data, you can view it in all of those tables, in all the form structure, make sure that all of the data has come through correctly, all of the forms look correct, before you actually commit it to the database. Once you commit it to the database, you're on your own. Uh, once you've committed it, and you, if you want to get rid of it, you then need to go through each of those individual tables and delete all those records one at a time, which is not something that I, would, that I would recommend. So what we usually do is we recommend that people make backups of their database before they fiddle around too much in the workbench, just so that they can get back to square one if they do really pose it completely. One of the other things that Specify has been working on is a workflow for um, trying to get labeled data into the workbench fairly rapidly. You can now buy these little Wi-Fi SD cards for a camera where they wirelessly transfer the images directly to your computer. And so what we're trying to do is work on a workflow where you can have a, an imaging station set up with labels or variant sheets or whatever the case may be. And as you're clicking and putting new items underneath the camera, as you hit the shutter, it tra transfers the label um, over to your machine and creates a row in the workbench for that particular label. So that you would very rapidly just be able to sit there and go click, 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 click and put these things under the camera and it's automatically creating those rows in the workbench. You can then go into the workbench and you can then use those images to do data entry into those particular rows and then import the data and the images into your collection all at once. There are three obvious, work obvious workflows that you can get from that. Um, one is manually entering the data by hand. The second one is using some sort of OCR system to be able to OCR the label data <coughs> and then put it into a block field and then use that to pass it out into the relevant fields that you're looking to do. And the third one is this concept of SGR, which is only relevant really to the variant collections at the moment. But it's a mechanism of using existing duplicate data that has already been catalogued by other people and using that data to then catalog your duplicate of that specimen um, into your collection. There are obviously applications for other collections in terms of specimens are shared, localities are shared, um, all those kinds of things. Um, but at the moment, it's, it's mainly, mainly um, for the variant collection, so I'm not going to go through it. One of the other things we've incorporated into Specify is the life mapper application. Um, this is a, a, a mechanism of searching GBIF for other records that are out there for a particular species that you're interested in. So you type your species in at the top, you go into that little left hand menu and select the species and it will plot all of the records that are in GBIF that are georeferenced onto a map view. Then you can go down to the bottom there where it says show my data and you can then show your information on the map associated with all of the other records. It's a really nice way of being able to check that your records fall within the proposed distribution of that species based on other people's information. Um, and so this is um, in specify at the moment and you can use it. At some, at some stage we're hoping to be able to also include the actual credentials
predictive distribution map maps within the system as well, um, so that you can get a, a final resolution as to whether your specimens fall within that distribution. One of the other things we've incorporated into, into Specify is the GBIF IPT client to be able to get your data out of your database in DAW and core format and share it with other people, share it with other consortia, fishing if you're in NAS or this, whatever the case may be, um, in a very easy and efficient manner. And so um, there's a portion of it that happens in Specify and there's a portion of it that happens in the GBIF IPT client itself, which is a web-based client. Um, so the first portion is deciding which version of Darwin Core you want to use. We're talking about standards. There's about six or seven different versions of Darwin Core out there that you can use. Um, and we ship specify with a bunch of those included as XSD files. You choose which one of those you want to use. And then you go into specify itself and you create this mapping file. So much like we did with the, with the workbench where you are mapping your files, your fields up to the, to the fields in your Excel spreadsheet, you do much the same here. You map up your fields to the Darwin Core concepts. Map all of those up, and then you use our little um, Darwin Core um, exporting tool, which then takes all of that data in that mapped Darwin Core format and exports it out of your database as a big CSV file. You can then take that CSV file and drop it into the GBIF IPT client itself, which, as I mentioned, is a web-based client. You create yourself a username and password, and you can you can set up your little your own little IPT instance to be able to get your data up and online. Um, you go in, you take your CSV file, you drop it in there, you add in a whole bunch of metadata and go through a couple of steps of, of setting up your IPT instance, and then <coughs> presto, you're ready to go. One of the other things that's coming out in one of the new version, in, in the new version of Specify that's coming out um, towards the end of March is some automated cleanup tools that are going to be built into Specify. Um, we're not sure whether all of these are going to ship at the same time, um, but two of the areas where people traditionally have problems with cleaning up their data is agents and localities. You usually get a lot of duplicated agents and you get a lot of duplicated localities in your collection. Lawrence, five miles west, five miles west of Lawrence, 5.5 miles west of Lawrence. They're all the same place. And so we're looking at developing these tools where you would be able to go in and do an, first do an exact match and say, there are three Andrew Bentleys in my collection. I want to crunch them all down, just have one left, and reassociate all the collection objects with the one that's left. Then you would be able to do a fuzzy matching, where you'd be able to go in and find Andy Bentley, Andrew Bentley, Andrew C. Bentley, Mr. Andrew C. Bentley, and Mr. Andrew C. Bentley with a different address. You would be able to then take all of those and create what's called a consensus record. You can say, I want the Mr., I want the Andrew, I want the C, I want the Bentley, and I want this address. You'd be able to create a consens consensus record and just have that one record left and crunch all of the rest away, get rid of them all, and then just have all of the objects reassociated with that one agent that's left. You'd be able to do much the same thing with localities. You'd be able to create a consensus record of saying, I want this locality, this geography, this lap, this long, this elevation, etc., and create a consensus record and crunch out all of these duplicates and get rid of them. One of the other things that we're going to be um, releasing with this next release is uh, a mechanism of being able to browse images in your collection and also import images into your collection in a batch mode. So you would be able to go in and either do um, a query and say, I want to see all the images associated with this query, or you'd be able to say, just show me all the images that are in my collection. And then you'd be able to browse them and use this little information window on the right hand side to look at exactly where they were collected, some data about the specimen, etc. You'd be able to double click on the image and it would come up in, in large view and you'd be able to zoom around and pan around and do whatever you want to. We're also looking at being able to import images in a, in a much more efficient manner. So taking a, a file and saying this catalog number belongs with this image and using that mapping file to then dump all of those images into your database in one fell swoop rather than having to go and connect each one up to the collection object one at a time. Um, and so that's going to be released with the next version, and so you'll be able to dump all of your images in um, really rapidly. One of the big things that we're looking at at the moment is the move, the move to the web. Um, at the moment, specifies a thick client that you install on your machine, and it only runs on your machine as a thick client. There are obvious disadvantages to having it that way. Um, we've realized those. Um, there is also a browser-based version of a web search portal where people can search your collection and see what you have and request loans, etc. Um, and so we are developing two different versions, web versions of Specify, 
um, concurrently. The thin client is being developed in collaboration with some people in Sweden um, who are obviously very interested in this and are helping us develop it. Um, so the, I'll, I'll deal with the browser based one first. Um, the web portal is going to be a high performance full text indexing <coughs> system of being able to just very rapidly get your data up on the web so that people can search your collection. Um, so it would look something like this, it's highly customizable, you can change colors, you can change images, you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, you would be able to search it through a, a simple search button on the left hand side where you can just type in a term and it would bring back a whole bunch of records. In this case I'm searching on my name, so it's brought back all the records out of my collection that are associated with my name. You'd also be able to do um, a complex search, so you'd be able to determine which of those fields you want to include in your web search and people go in and search for a particular species collected by a particular per person between these particular dates in this particular account. Those kinds of things would be possible and it would bring back the results. Once you get a result set that looks like this, you can then go and click on the little magnifying glass on the left hand side there and it will bring up a detail view for that particular specimen. You can change what columns come up in that detail view and it can be different from the grid view that gets returned for all of the specimens. You can then also have a look at all the images associated with that particular specimen. If there are more than one, they'll 